Well, welcome, 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 rugby league fans around the world. Welcome to Rugby League in America. If this is your first time joining us, hey, nice to meet you. My name's Dustin. Good to have you joining us on the first episode of Rugby League in America for 2024. A um, lot of stuff is going on. This is a great episode. I'm very excited for our guests that we have today. Um, I kind of alluded to it in social media. Former AM NRL player, former NRL player, um, former Dragons player in the NRL, I should say. You know, he godfather of American Rugby League, pioneer, if you will. Uh, David Dewey is going to be joining us later in the broadcast. So very excited for that. You know, it's been a couple of weeks, um, about a month or so since uh, recordings come out. Um, one is because I have been sick, as I said. And so apologies. I have been have no voice and uh, no way to communicate. Uh, so we've been doing stuff on social media. So, you know, Dylan's been posting some stuff on social media. I'll send a couple of things out. But there's all kinds of things that are happening in the world of rugby league. And, you know, we want to get right to it. And, of course, something that just came out um, you know, this week. Actually, uh, yesterday, U.S. time, we're recording on Friday, the 26th of January. Uh, I'm very excited to share with everybody um, that the, the USARL, the Board of Directors, has been selected and finalized. And I am honored to announce that I have been chosen to join the new Board of Directors. So myself, along with eight other very dedicated and amazing individuals from around the country um, are, are going to come together to form this new governing body um, after the IRL's time that they have you know, worked on a, a new governance and the organizations and things like that. So I will actually be joining uh, the group and we can help drive the growth and development of rugby league in America. And that's really exciting. I mean, <laughs> it's it's the the appointment represents you know for me this opportunity to steer the sport um, in a direction um, that I think is going to be you know this combined with the NRL happening you know a couple of weeks and and just overall growth of what we're seeing in rugby league is going to be a really great direction for everybody you know you have people on the board who have been around for you know 16 years who have tons of experience in rugby league with knowledge you have people who you know, are, are new to the U.S. Rugby League, but have been involved in other countries. You have, you know, myself, you know, who, from a communication standpoint, who just trying to promote the game as much as we possibly can. So it's really exciting time, you know, for us. And rest assured that I will continue here to here now. I'm going to continue to keep you informed through the podcast. It, you know, there's no doubt about it. We're we're going to continue. Um, I think the thing people would say is like, yo, can you be on the board of directors and do the podcast and, and, and do hosting? And I said, yeah, sure. You know, have I talked, you know, have we kind of criticized the USARL from time to time? Yes, we have. I'm very open about that because I think, you know, there's better things that we can do and there's, you know, some, some important things that should have been done, but you know, that's fine. We all learn lessons and we move forward. Right. And so I'm going to continue to work through the project podcast because i think one transparency is key and if, if i ever criticize the board and in, in the, the decisions that are made you can count that i'm going to call myself out but i'm not really into much self-harm even though i am an eels fan so that's kind of a you know double and sword there um but yeah i mean we're going to do as best we can you know and if you want to call us out by all means call us out come on the podcast let us know how bad we're doing but guarantee that's not going to happen there's going to be some good stuff. The future looks bright. Big plans in the works. Plenty, plenty, plenty to be excited about in, in rugby league. So stay tuned for that. More updates coming. Yeah, lo lots of stuff happening in the in the next next couple months as far as the USARL and the governing body and what happens. So let's get on to some other big news, right? So in other news that we have, um, we kind of give you a rundown of like some events that are happening. So we had the uh, elections happen. Coming up this weekend, and unfortunately, we probably won't come out in time, uh, so we'll post on social media. We've got, you know, a tri-series down in Tampa with the Ontario Ospreys taking on the Tampa Mayhem and then Ospreys taking on the new Valkyrie team that have been uh, created. So that'll be kind of exciting to see. Uh, we got a Friday night under the lights, 7 o'clock at night. How exciting is that? Um, and then we also have Saturday, you know, mid-morning. We're going to have a match tomorrow 
um, on the 27th. So we'll give you an update, and hopefully if we can get any streaming stuff on there, you know, we'll, we can point back to it since this will be released after that. But if not, then we'll try to get some other information out to you as well. Um, then after that, we've got the, the excitement that is Wheelchair Rugby League. Um, the USA Wheelhawks, you know, they had, you know, Team USA went to the World Cup, created the buzz around them. Um, what a great team. How, how fun was it to watch them? They are now competing um, in a back-to-back um, series down in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina at the Adaptive Sports Festival. So the Beers of America Adaptive Sports Festival. They're trying to grow a wheelchair rugby league. Um, they host Wales on the second and the third, right? So center stage right in front of everybody. All kinds of, you know, uh, and the events, there's tons of adaptive sports events that are happening in Myrtle Beach, but also you've got this wheelchair match, two of them, not just one, two of them. So that's really fun. Um, except, exceptional rugby league. You know, you have new team captains. Jesse Lind is taking on the captain's role following Jeff Townsend's retirement. Um, you know, I think that's that's fun, too. Like more rugby, wheelchair rugby league players are starting to get involved and they're starting to build that out. How, how fun would it be to start seeing a wheelchair rugby league competition in the U.S.? Like, I'm, not, I'm going for it. Um, you know, I think for me, with the wheelchair rugby league and how much fun it is, it's more than just the game, right? More than just two games. It's celebration of inclusivity and athleticism and diversity that we have within the rugby league community. So don't miss out on this. If you, got, if you need tickets or anything, you know, you can reach out to them. Um, if you can make it down to Myrtle Beach, uh, they're... You know, I'd like to make it down there, but uh, don't know if we can actually make it down in time or do it. But maybe next year we plan for going down for that the adaptive sports event and watching some wheelchair rugby league. So um, I mean, who knows? Maybe it'll be a stream and we can uh, watch it online with everybody. So February 2nd, 3rd, wheelchair rugby league. Now, turning our attention to, you know, kind of the we'll call it the main event that's coming up in the first quarter in the U.S. this year. And it's part of our conversation that we're going to have with our guest here in just a little bit. But, man, it's, it's the Vegas weekend, right? How exciting is this? It's not just the, the big matches with the Sydney teams, with Brisbane, with Manly, but it's the Combine. It's the Nines. It's, you know, you have the Masters event. So for those of you who don't know, that there's a Masters game between Australia U.S. and Canada, they're kind of doing a round robin as well, you know, to get people who of all ages, um, uh, plus ages over 40, over 30, I think it's over 35, but it should be over 40. Come on, guys. <laughs> uh, but that's going to happen uh, on Friday night. And then Friday night culmination, you're going to have USA versus Canada. Now, the last match was not an official IRL sanctioned match or not an official points match is what I should say. Let me qualify that. Sanctioned, but just not a points qualifier. Um, uh, Ed W. Clark High School in Las Vegas, Friday night, 7 o'clock. Um, you know, this is kind of like it sets the stage. We're setting the stage. USA Canada is setting the stage for NRL opening round at, on Allegiant Stadium. You know, this rivalry that has been going on for, for years. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, the last match, USA lost 22-10 in Tampa back in November of 2022. Um, but, you know, the, the last time that USA took the field, uh, was just against Jamaica just back in December, where they took a 30 to 26 win um, over the Jamaican national team down in Kingston. Lots of um, lots of excitement there. This has kind of fueled a little bit of confidence in the U.S. team. You know, some new selections have happened. Um, there's still controversy on the selections, and you know, we're gonna we'll talk about that you know more in the future um, as we get closer to the game. Um, but I think that there's you know we're growing. You know, there's some more additions for the West Coast teams out there, and I'm, I, I look and I hope that you know we can get better looks and more visibility into getting more of those West Coast players involved in the national team. Hey, you know, somebody said it on social media. People are arguing about national team selection now. That makes the sport. You know, people are like, oh, we're taking this sport to another level now. Um, rugby league has made it when we can argue who should be on the national team, who should be, or, you know, who should be on the all-star teams and things like that. If you get state of origin or, you know, whatever it may be, I was like, oh, he should be in, he should be in, they should be in, not this person, not this person. Hey, that is actually good for the growth of rugby league as people are fighting. So now I think you're going to see people out in Utah, people, you know, even people in the Northeast who you know, play for the Black Foxes and they're going to be like, hey, listen, we didn't make it. Now I got to fight my way to get on there. 
I don't know. We'll see. No, rugby league scene in the U.S. is heating up, right? That, that, that's I just gave you a 10 minute fast recap of everything that's going on. Not to mention, you know, that Sacramento's Immortals have just joined the PCRL. There's whispers of more teams joining the PCRL. We've got a new team uh, out in, in Los Angeles and the West LA Jackrabbits. Um, you know, so you have three teams in LA, you've got one team in San Diego, you've got all the teams down in Florida. You know, people are talking about all kinds of stuff that's happening. Um, and you know, we'll see. Like, it's going to be the growth of the game is big. There's whispers and rumors going on behind the scenes for, you know, maybe some major changes. Um, I'll let you know once I get more, I guess, stable information on it. But uh, hopefully you can tune in here to get that information and tune into the board of directors and, you know, the announcements from USARL. Um, as, you know, we improved communication from that as well. Um, you know, I think I've talked enough for this set for like a quick overview right so we're, we're the u.s we're, we're going crazy here in the u.s people are excited these headlines are just the beginning right the headlines are just the beginning of all the great stuff that's happening the big thing that's happening is nrl vegas and the excitement that's building around that we're going to take a short break when we return we are going to be joined by a true true pioneer in american rugby league mr david Nui is going to join us. We're going to talk NRL. We're going to talk Combine, talk Nines. We're going to talk the growth of the game here in the U.S. So stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. Welcome back, everybody. When it comes to rugby league in the U.S., you can't really talk about this sport without bringing up our guest today. He's not only a former player, but also was a key figure in the growth of the sport here from, from day one. You know, maybe not going all the way back to that 53 team that went down and played in South Sydney and some other stuff, but he's been around for a long time. Remarkable career as a player, a coach, administrator. He's regarded as one of the founders of Rugby League in the U.S., having established the AMNRL long ago. He's none other than David Newey, and we're thrilled to have him join us today. David, welcome to the show. How are you doing, man? Dustin, great. Great to be here, mate. Excited to talk about all things Rugby League in America. Oh, no, that's, that's, the, that's the big thing is that there's so much going on uh, with a variety of things oh, just splattered throughout right now. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing that we're talking about is the NRL after – you know, years of you kind of getting things organized is finally is finally recognize that hey, maybe we can go over to the U.S. and you know have an event and have a lot of fun out there. So, you know, how do you feel about that? Like that's kind of pretty exciting, yeah. Yeah, super exciting. I think there's a lot there's a lot about it that gets me really pumped up um, for a number of things. You, you know, you gave me a nice intro there, but my my view of all of that stuff that we did in the past was just a, a really great opportunity. It was a thrill and a pleasure to try and develop the sport in America. You know, you're a big fan of it, obviously, yourself, former rugby player. And it's it's a game that we believe, I'm sure both of us on this this uh, call here, uh, feel that Americans really take to it. They see it on, 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 have more access and see it on a larger scale. And how much yeah. bigger could it be than the National Rugby League coming to the U.S. and playing in Las Vegas? So, right. so many reasons to be excited about it, not just a the fact that there'll be, um, you know, four of the best teams from the competition playing and some of the best players in the world. But the things that can happen behind it and around it, that, that gets me excited as well. Yeah. As, as somebody who, you know, you said, you know, you're, you, you did play a key role in kind of establishing and helping grow the sport back, you know, uh, years ago. How do you see this event really, you know, contributing to the popularity and the development in this country? And, you know, are there specific outcomes that you're really hoping to see from, from this NRL venture into, into the U.S.? Yeah, look, I think I'll leave all the, um, the deliverables to the guys on the ground like yourself <laughs> right, that, that, that have hands on at the moment, just but from a, you know, 30,000 feet in the air looking down. I'll tell you this right now, if, if this opportunity came along way back when, when we were having a crack at it, I, I think we would have embraced it like you guys are at the moment and, and taken every opportunity we could 
to try and benefit from it. And what does that mean? It means that you are able to direct people to an in-stadium event that they probably wouldn't have an opportunity to go to in any other situation. So they can go and see it live, which they can in, in Las Vegas. They can watch it live on television. They can enjoy all of the activities that are going on in, in the lead up to it. You know, the, the, the media push and the promotions that the NRL did when they came over in early December. And then the, the fact that the NRL are talking about a long-term commitment, that, that's got to mean a lot. It means yeah. that this tentpole event, you know, in, in my mind, I guess, if you put it in the perspective of the NFL, and we, let's play that game. You know, in Australia, we would look at the NRL as the equivalent of the NFL in America. It, it's the top rugby league, the top rugby version, one of the top sports in the country. So it's going to be right here for people to come and look at. And, and the combine, the fact that they're looking at talent ID and an opportunity for pathways for players from here. Uh, to make their way across to a professional competition. The nines competition that's going to be, that gives you know the, the clubs around the country and then ultimately clubs around the world a chance to come and participate. So there's a little bit for everybody. And it yeah. means that if it's just not a one stop and it's going to be done over time, it means that this first event might look like it is evolving at the moment, but by year two, three, four, and five, there can be you know residual benefits for everybody. I've always been an advocate of a rising tide lifts all boats, yep. and everybody who wants to jump on and and be part of this thing and get excited about it, uh, I'm right there with you. And if I can have a have a crack at trying to you know uh, talk it up and lead the way, I'm right here to do it. Well, you know, obviously we when people talk about rugby league and, you know, you've been on, you know, on the lips of many people saying, Hey, what's David Newey think about this? And you know, I remember back when it first happened, you know, there was a couple of interviews and, you know, uh, you know, Dean Ritchie and other people kind of did quotes and stuff from you. And I think you're right. Like you talk about the excitement, you know, there's a five, it's a five year plan. You talk about the long term. you know, b- between, you know, the coming to the U S and playing the NRL, it is, it's a significant commitment for them. How do you think this partnership will shape the future of of rugby league you know what kind of do you anticipate kind of an impact on a local fan base with you know the nfl i think on our, we've said before that it's you know we don't anticipate anything grand like you know seventy five thousand people sixty four thousand people filling you know legion stadium to start off with but it's a starter i think you, you said it as well you know so how do you feel it will shape the way that rugby league grows in the u.s and that impact on not just the local fan base in um in las vegas and helping grow stuff there but also just you know nationwide it's a good question and and i was happy to respond to some communication that came through D- dean ritchie was really cool and when he contacted me and and, and and we had a chat about it and gave me an opportunity to sort of you know uh, take a point of view because i've been pretty quiet and and then in the recent past, I've been involved in other business. Um, but this one gave me a real opportunity to think think about it. And when I thought, you know, uh, and gave it some considered thought, I thought, this is this is serious. This is legitimate. This is something that I hope the guys that are involved on the ground in, the, in, in this country embrace. I really believe that. And, I, and I'm going to keep reinforcing that because I think it's I think it's a chance now for dialogue. There's communication. Yeah. Doors doors can be opened, and opportunities can be created at all different levels, you know, from the bottom up and the top down. I've already been a big advocate of that about the game. Uh, it needs a foundation, right? That's obvious that you need the grassroots and you need local operators to try and develop and inspire people to play. And, and you know, that, that, that aspirational piece comes with the top end stuff with events like this, where people get to see the best in the world in the game that they're involved in, in their backyard, on their back doorstep with a chance to come and participate, whether it's, by watching in stadium or being involved in one of the activities around it. I think everybody needs to talk and, and that for, yeah. the fact that that's happening, I think it's a positive mate. And along the way, as, as you'd be well aware, you know, you, you, you're a communicator and, 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 and message a lot about the sport in this country and do a great job with it. People have opinions and, and um, points of view, but the more that we can talk and everyone gets around it and, um, and shares their, uh, you know, they're interested in how they'd like to contribute or how they'd like to participate and people are listening, good things will happen. I think that's going on now, mate. You might be able to tell me because I think we just had a headline overnight, right? So you're involved now with um, (laughs) the the governing body. So congratulations on that. Uh, Yeah. Uh, And and on behalf of everybody right here, I just want to make sure we go plug to the old (laughs) AMNRL. 
Well, yeah, done. yeah, congratulations. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate it, and you know, I think is uh, one of the things that I mentioned at the top of, uh, of the broadcast before I had you come on was, you know, I am grateful. This is uh, is very, um, um, what's the word? Uh, I was uh, humbled, right? I, you know, multiple people within rugby league um, said, "Hey, we think that you would be great to, you know." basically come and help us you know provide the pathway and the direction and work with this a great group of you know right now eight other people right so nine people on a governing on a governing body right now helping to drive the direction of the game forward you know and i think this kind of change in the new governance that's come through with the IRL you know as i mentioned earlier is very exciting to work with these people you know people have tons of years of experience on on this board you know not just in rugby league but in business and in life and it's going to be really unique to kind of see us move forward and you know like you said you know working with you know, and chatting with folks like yourself and other people who were part of growing the game back with the AMNRL uh, will be be exciting as well um sure. So to that point, sorry to interrupt you. No, no, I think, no, you're good. I think I think there's some some relationship here between what you're doing and what we tried. And you, you say growing the sport, and ours was about introduction, right? Way back yeah. when, it, it was trying to start a new sport, totally without any sort of foundation. As you mentioned, we had a chat prior to this. There was a 1950s tour to Australia of an all star team, and oh, yeah. there'd been been some teams go across to the sevens. They were different things, but no one was really playing rugby league here. That's yeah. that, that's that that's fair. And, and we developed it just very humbly by just starting with touch footy in the park, just trying to get, find people to play. But there were people, and, and, I, and I hope it sort of introduces the, the conversation around, well, how did you find rugby league? <laughs> because that's that's how it started for us. People that either saw it somewhere or got an interest, and they're like, wow, this is this is different form of rugby league. This, this looks like football. Yeah. Uh, what, what is it? So how did you get involved, mate? Uh, I, I think I might have mentioned this to people before. People always like to ask, like, how does this random American um, who, you know, just randomly starts talking about rugby league and meets other Americans yeah. who talk about rugby league? Um, fascinating. So um, 2001 grand final, um, mates and I were up late consuming beverages. And by 2001, late, was, probably... what, was, it, what, was that Broncos, Canterbury? Yeah. Who played? Eels and Knights. It was, it was the nice. Eels team oh. that were, oh, oh. Yeah, they were dominated the entire season. Uh, oh, win it. Well, oh, see, yeah. <laughs> so I went into that match, right? So it was college. Uh, you know, went into the the match. Not we didn't know anything. It was just late. You know, Fox Sports World was the. You probably remember that that's Fox it. Sports yeah, World. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they used to we're they cover because they covered part of getting that coverage here. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So so Fox Sports World brought on the match, and man, we we had had a few pints actually a lot of pints probably and we're just you know i, I played american football um i actually did play union in in high school and in college as well so um you know so we we were just up late you know watching fox sports world because you know and then we just started watching going oh man this is this is intense like you know, oh man it's like oh it's that rugby sport that nobody talked about and then somebody goes yeah but they're not they're not doing that the scrum thing and they're you know that, that where they bash each other i was like yeah but man this is fast paced like this guys are hitting hard and you know, we're watching it. And, you know, I think I, kind of how a lot of Americans do about rooting for teams that aren't in America. It's not a regional thing. It's like, hey, I like that team. Let's go with them. And so at that point, we had no idea about the entire season of the NRL in 2001. You know, we couldn't look it up on our phones because, well, I don't, most yeah. of us didn't have phones back then. <laughs> um, and sure. so I just, I just said, man, I like I like this Eels team. I, they're, they're down. They seem like the underdogs. You know, little did I know and find out later that they were actually heavily favored going into that. But, you know, yeah. uh, but John's well, kind of wow. ran, all, ran all over them. And then they're almost, they almost came back. And I was like, so we're cheering. I mean, it's, you know, at that particular time, it was probably 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning by the time that second half kicked off. And so, um, yeah, that was just, that was it. Good Grand final, 2001. And of course, you know, I've chatted with folks in New Zealand and, you know, from SC and Z, and they said, well, you just needed one more year and you could have been a Warriors fan. I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. So the question is, are you still an Eels fan? I am. Uh, listen, I'm an Eels fan. I'm a Browns fan. I'm a, 
indie indie as well guardians now so i'm just used to getting all the way to the finals and losing all the time <laughs> so it's just, it's just like an internal like i must have that pain that happens season after season after season <laughs> i get it i get it man i'm a dragons fan so i, I feel you fine yeah i know I, it's a, that's i've got some uh, uh, michael carboni our our, our 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 fearless don carboni also a dragons fan and he is he, he feel, oh man. yeah yeah he's a Good big man. he's a big dragons fan <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll be back <laughs> yeah so yeah hopefully hopefully in the next year or two like get well, some growing to do <laughs> and, and 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 also over here in vegas maybe they'll be part of next year's uh, yeah there we go e- eels eels and dragons next year in vegas that'll be great <laughs> oh, let's make it happen <laughs> let's go let's go um you know you you mentioned you know beforehand kind of talking about grassroots right so the the whole week right it's not just um you know that saturday game and by the way you, you talked about the excitement of that saturday game you know being able to see everything and be a part of everything you get a chance to be a part if you're there and have the opportunity to go to vegas to, to see two two matches mm-hmm. you know for the price of one basically is a steal you know in the cost like in some cases like you know if you want to go a little bit higher up there's 20 dollars tickets for people to see two nrl matches that americans wouldn't be able to see even before that which i think is amazing um you know for the growth of the sport here and even like how do we bring all of our American football fans along with us to go watch that? Like, that's that's my goal. But, you know, you talked about, you know, the grassroots and all the stuff that's happening. You know, we have the nines tournament that's happening at the same time, all the local clubs. What do you see this, um, the involvement, right, of these, you know, these teams contributing to the development of kind of player pathways and attracting new talent, you know, um, you know to, for rugby league in the U.S.? Uh, example is Chicago North Shore is a, is a women's team. And known throughout the union side as a great women's team and a great sevens team, they're coming to play nines. It seems to me like that is, you know, like, hey, here's here's this women's team who's typical union, typical sevens, coming to try league and nines. That's only positive movement for me is what I think. Oh, it's absolutely. Everything you said makes sense. It's, it, 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 it's a place to direct people. You know, the, the things that we talked about way back in the beginning we didn't have. But you have it now. You've got yep. a top top level women's rugby union team wanting to try, you know, nines rugby league. There's opportunities, and and for players, that's what they're looking for, right? They look for an opportunity, whether it's in their local area or whether it's regionally or whether it's nationally. And on a stage like this, there, there's not just I think there's prize money for the two competitions too, oh, yeah. right? for the men and the Tw- women. Twenty twenty k prize pot i we don't know the actual breakdown i probably need to get yeah. in touch with those guys but you know twenty thousand dollars whether it's you know whether it's a ten thousand dollars 750 and 2500 for a first second third that's still it's the biggest prize pot ever as far as i know in american rugby league um you know i know they tried stuff in california in the championship rugby league with their nines but i don't their prize pool was not 20 grand okay. for a men's winner and a female and a women's winner that's a yeah. 40k total pot that's pretty fantastic if you ask me yeah and it's going to get people's attention and it's going to get people interested and then you get them to come and watch the game right they'll come and yeah. play and then they'll participate and then they get a chance to have a look at the top players in the world and then the, the goal from that and the goal that we utilized a lot is take what you have there and then take it back to your local area and share it. Right. And if you're able to share both the excitement and then the fundamentals and the basics of it and you're teaching people, because basically that's what it is. There's a lot of teaching involved. Everybody wins and benefits. And if it, there's an impact from that, that more girls are interested in playing rugby league in America from that very tournament line, there's a win straight away. So yeah. small gains, but, but they all make sense, don't they? Yeah. And, and, you know, I talked about it, you know, on a previous podcast, I've talked about it with some other people um, and other ABC Queensland, you know, I had a chat with them and I basically you get said, around, man, you get around. Huh? Listen, apparently nobody else talks about rugby league in America as with an American accent right now, except for, you know, Lance and guys who join us. Uh, <laughs> so people just reach out and say, hey, can you tell us what's happening in American rugby league? <laughs> hey, you're on the same Let's yeah, right. Exactly. I, I'm I, stay I with encourage it. you to see I don't want anybody else to start covering American rugby league as an American right now. So no. <laughs> you're the hell uh, you're the hell yeah, there you go. Of rugby league in America. So. <laughs> Let, let's make sure it. that they, they, we get you out there to the game, right? <laughs> yeah, right. Cover, cover the whole lot. So yeah, yeah, we can we well. can cover nines. We got the uh, the USA Canada match. We can I'll, happy to cover that as well. We'll just need some okay. uh, some color commentators with some people too. I don't know. So, if, so if you're, the, if, 
If you're available, if the, let me know. <laughs> mate, if the NRL are listening and they want to support you, I'll, I'll, I'll help you any way I can. There we go. <laughs> there we go. NRL, if you're listening, this is directly towards you. And I know you're listening because I think you do at least. Or uh, if you can just help me and the team get out there, we can, uh, we'll do some great stuff and uh, really help promote the game from an American perspective. That's right? it. That's, that's what we want. Critical. That's what they want to see, right? <laughs> it's, it's critically important, right? And that's the, that's the goal, I think, for everybody, right? The NRL have their motivation for being here, which is fine. Yeah. But everyone around it, I would encourage them to embrace this. Come out and work out a way that, you know, people can meet, right? It, 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 it's, a, it's a point that all these different um, entities that are, have an interest in, in rugby league at whatever level in America, yeah. it can be a central point that over time could be a meeting place, right? Yeah. For everyone to come together and, and, and share information and then take it back to where they're from. And then ultimately that old rising tide lifts all boats. Everyone wins and everyone benefits. Yeah, I think if we can look it from that way, it wins. Yeah, and I think one of the things that we've already kind of seen from an American rugby league perspective is that you know with this nines tournament, it has reintroduced some other te- some teams and some interest you know around it. You know, I, I and I think specifically of um, and I know things were kind of already in the works ahead of time, but the Sacramento Immortals and the uh, Palo Alto uh, East Palo Alto Razorbacks, former you know championship rugby league teams, who um, I know the uh, the Immortals are joining the PCRL. I, we haven't got a confirmation for the, the Razorbacks, but they're going to play. Se- they're going to play the Nines with mm-hmm. you know their se- their Sevens teams typically you know uh, in the in the summertime. But they're going to come and play Nines, and they played rugby league, so they know the sport. You know, so yeah. that's like okay, it's two more teams. You know, maybe a Vegas team pops up next year. Maybe some new East Coast teams pop up next year. New women's teams. You know, I think that that growth is going to happen too, which is be very, very exciting for that rising tide lifts all boats that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Well, listen, and it's 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 been um, exciting to not just watch the interest in the game itself, but the 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 greater benefits from so many players that were around our era that came through in the early stages of the game and you can call them pioneers you can call them guys who who created teams from the ground up which a lot of the clubs are doing now at the moment yeah involved in the tomahawks who are all talking again yeah and, and it's not like there was you, an you've been po- they, you've been posting they, some of those yeah you, and, and you, it's not a, not an issue why they didn't talk to each other but they grew up right i right. i was the older guy when i was around and you know it was like herding sheep <laughs> yeah, whether it was a Tomahawks tour or whether it was one of the Glen Mills teams, which I was involved in against, but they were young men, you know, yeah. younger than yourself or, or, or even 19, 20, 21, 22, no kids. Now they've grown up and they have families, but they still love the game. They yeah. still follow the game. And this is a real opportunity for them to come together. So that in itself gets me excited as well. Well, that's, and I think from my perspective, that gets me excited as well to see some of the old players that, you know, are now posting on social media about going to the matches, you know, yeah. you know, it, it almost seems like a, a rejuvenation and it's not just them that, that, that I'm excited about. It's people who are reaching out to me on social media and some other contacts that I've had from working in union um, when I was working with the MLR teams, um, you know, said, Hey, uh, I got some guys who are interested in, you know, chatting with you about Las Vegas and what's going on. We're all going to go out there. Uh, perfect example. And I'm, I'm hoping to get him on the podcast soon is Andrew Siniola. Who's yeah. a former Manly? Who's a former Manly Sea Eagle? And you know, he he was you know I was with he and I were down in Austin at the exact same time, help, trying to help Austin through some struggling times. But yeah. that's been pretty exciting for us to kind of reconnect. And you know, we're trying to talk with you know um, other people like Sam Harris with the Chicago um, Hounds, you know, as well, since he's also a Manly guy. It seems like there's a lot of Manly guys who are here. Actually, yeah. that I'm talking to, <laughs> uh, and, but there, and, but there's people scattered throughout. Some a lot of Australian expats and, and Kiwi expats who are here in the U.S. who are league players and fans yep. that are just now starting to kind of crawl out of the woodworks. And that's kind well, of exciting, too. Again, and you ask about, and, and you know, so these things evolve in the discussion, but the residual benefits of this match coming, you know, at a high level, you just said it, it brings people out. So the communication and conversations I've had, so in the background about people that are coming, people think about Daniel Vida, who's now right. in the WWE. WWE. <laughs> Played with the, my old drag, played with the Broncos. Yeah. You just mentioned Sam Harris, who played, you know, 60 odd first grade games for Manly, is now involved yeah. in rugby union in this country. And, and these conversations are all around. Lee Diffie, who's a broadcaster for oh, NBC, yeah. another Aussie, mad Broncos fan. 
Oh, yeah, really? They're all they're all around the place here, and and slowly uh, but surely, more and more people are starting to, as you said, sort of come out of the the the, the woodwork and 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 embrace this uh, exciting event. Yeah, that Lance Ohio is another one too. So, uh, oh, legend from the world. Yeah, right. Up, there, <laughs> yeah, he... uh, up up in the Midwest. So, <clears throat> yeah, he's you know, up in it's, uh, it's Michigan. On and on. Yeah, believe. and doing a great job with his rugby yeah. club. But he's a guy that you know, if you evolve. You know the the growth of rugby league in this country. You have these people you can reach out to, and right. now will be like, "Look, how can I help?" And, yeah. and it's wonderful. I think it's a it's a it's a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, it's de- it's definitely exciting for sure. And of course, I, mean, I noticed that all those Sam, Andrew, Lance, those guys are all in the Midwest. Was where we're, we really need more teams in the Midwest sure. to, to yeah. kind of help out. So, um, yeah. as a hot hotbed for a union, how do we start stealing some of those union guys to come over to league? Is what what I say. So, and I think I think what the what the clubs are doing at the moment, are, are, are not no, not indifferent to what we try to do. You know, you try and um, create relationships, yeah. right, as opposed to confrontation. Because yeah. I think when we you go back to where, you know, culturally from where I'm from in Sydney or Australia, there's a little toing and froing, you know, the, the rugby, bit of back. <laughs> yeah, the, you guys are mongos or you guys are, you know, you know are, are pretty boys playing rugby union, rah, rah, whatever it might be. <laughs> but here, there's an opportunity to try and work into the schedules that benefit everyone. You know, there's mutual benefit. And I, yeah. I think we see it here as we played in summer. So that yep. way we played in the seventh season and it didn't conflict with the traditional existing 15s competitions. And, and for the most part, we set up teams that were partnered with teams in Australia, which was good because yep. that gave us resources around equipment. You know, they sent jerseys, but it also created a sister club relationship beyond that. But we also partnered with rugby clubs, yep. you know, rug, an established rugby union infrastructure and club. And we asked them, what about playing rugby league in summer? And a yeah. number of them did that. So many, many ways that we can coexist, right? I think we're yeah. out of the dark ages and there's a way to it. You know, embrace both. Yeah. And I think that's actually one thing we've been pretty adamant about, it, you know, so, well, at least since I took over almost three years ago now is, you know, kind of posting stuff is that there's, everybody goes, oh, code wars, code wars. In the U.S., it doesn't really exist. I mean, it doesn't well, other, like, there's still, you know, over in England, oh, M62, like, they're definitely... <laughs> Definitely some wars there, but, uh, uh, you know, for us, like, I think you're right, like helping, you know, work and partnerships. And I think touch rugby has gotten really big in the U S too, which is also kind of like really in line with, you know, rugby league style of play, you know, touch down, go touch down. Yeah. Like you, you know, so I think that that, that is really neat. And I know some people who are working on that and saying, well, we could really bring and find these touch rugby players who are also union players who already get a kind of a sense of the speed of ball play for, for rugby league as well. Yep. Yeah, for sure. And, and each organization and entity is going to, you know, obviously push their own cause. But if you look across the the landscape of, of rugby union and rugby league around the world now, it, there's so much crossover, mate. That's it's yeah. not our argument in our day and age. You know, you got Andy Farrell, who was an all-time superstar in rugby league, who's made yeah. a, an all-star career for himself in rugby union. He's now the British an Irish Lions head coach. Head coach, right, yeah. You know, and, and you've got all these guys. And, and, and again, you know, I went through an era, mate, where they said rugby, and I played both games. I was really fortunate to be able to do that. Rugby union guys can't tackle. Well, I know they can tackle now, and a lot of that in some in part was by the introduction of rugby league-specific drills and techniques and, yeah. and, and information that, that changed the game. You know, it yeah. really did change the game of rugby union in terms of the professional era. And um, again, you know, we hear it and I've heard it along the way here about this event. You know, people are calling this rugby, mate. I, I, I'm pretty sure we're in the same place. I'm, it's not my argument. I'm like, look, everyone benefits and wins if they're talking about rugby. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, listen, it's going to be in the U.S. if we can just get the rugby as the, the ball that you had in your hand a minute ago, that oval ball, yeah. basically saying yeah. like, as long as we can get that, I think once people start realizing, like, okay, there's some differences, and that's great. And and you said it too. Like, I, I really enjoy it because I think some of the best rugby union players, you know, the best defensive rugby union players, all have that rugby league tackling knowledge and defensive structure. Um, yeah. That's why I think Sam was such a great when he was down in Austin. Uh, yeah. Sam Harris, like their defense was impeccable because he implemented that rugby league style defense, like up in your yeah. face and hit, hit it. So, uh, yeah, I like that. <laughs> and, it, and it was smart, you know, rugby union understood. And, you know, there's a benefit, yeah. right? So you can find yeah. some good in all of these games and, 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 and move your own, you know, yeah. version of it forward. 
Yeah. So let's get, let's get back to the kind of the exciting weekend um, in Vegas. You know, we talked about the Nines event. You know, we know that the U.S. and Canada match is happening. The Masters event's happening. Like, again, all these events are happening around. It's so fantastic. Um, by the way, I know people are trying to get out to uh, you and some of the other AMNR guys about playing for the U.S. Masters. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to make some connections and help we'll, you guys out and get we'll, in touch we'll, with Mike Brogan. So. <laughs> we'll climb out of our wheelchairs and, and see how it works out. <laughs> hey, listen, they've asked me if I want to come play, and I'm like, listen, I'm 41. <laughs> I, think I'm, I think I'm done. <laughs> 41? You're, you're yeah. a pretty guy. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But anyway, so we got a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, one of the things we didn't talk about, which I think is also really exciting, is uh, you know this, this talent combine that the that the NRL is putting on similar to the NFL's um what do you, and kind of like that player pathway how do you envision this combine impacting you know the recruitment and development of of rugby league players in the US knowing the fact that some of these players may are you know going to be football players that come in without any experience in rugby league um and trying to make you know make that transition and you know get scouted and recruited by you know an NRL team Mate, if, you, if I put on an administrative hat or an operations hat on behalf of the NRL or on behalf of anyone here in America, I'd be driving that as much as I'm driving the tent pole event. That's a year round opportunity. All oh, right. That's something that you could create, you know, brick and mortar, a location that you can direct people to that this is a, this is a, a, a place of excellence, a place of opportunity for athletes in this country to charm, have an opportunity to work into a professional um, opportunity in Australia. Well, what, what does that mean? What does that look like? It can be talent identification across the country, across all sports, not just our version of it. You know, when you look at athletes in this country and you want to identify talent, in my view is you're looking at guys who play in the air, aerialists, guys who can jump on the end of our game, wingers who can leap for the ball, or yep. contest possession in the air on a high kick. And who does that better than basketball is playing with their hands above their head. You know, and if you look at the contact that comes through other sports, whether it's football and the things that they understand, there's so many different sports in this country with some rugby specific um, talent and skills that if you put a real effort and emphasis behind um, the identification of them, Mm -hmm. um, the recruitment of them, so to speak, and you create a, a version of the IMG international player pathway for rugby league and in reverse engineer it for the benefit of our sport, that in and of itself is going to motivate athletes. And if that motivates athletes to try out to be part of that academy or that um, pathways location, wherever it might be, then organically it's going to benefit everywhere else around the country where they come from. Yeah because they're going to have to get some introduction to the sport. Let's say it's at the Pelicans or at the, whichever other teams are playing in this country at the moment, the teams in Utah. Yeah. There's, 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 a, there's a benefit, a mutual benefit for everyone. So the way I look at the, 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 the five-year plan that the NRL have, if it's the 10-pole event, that's great. That gravitates and aggregates all the information and attention towards this really high-level um, event. But then you've got a year-round opportunity to create something that people believe in. It's like, oh, wow. So it's not just the players that could potentially go and play in Australia or England or somewhere professionally. It's the players that could you know, evolve into the, the national teams here, men and yeah. women. And, I, and I'm a bit ignorant here, and I'm, I'm focusing on men, but I should be including the women as well because it's such an opportunity for them as well across the country oh, yeah. and around the world. Yeah. But I, I see that as a real, real opportunity. And then the Nines, the footy festival, the Masters, it's a massive opportunity around this NRL event. You know, I'll go back to some experience I had helping guys that were involved in the Vegas Sevens. Oh, the yeah. Rugby Union, which turned into a massive event, mate. 80,000 fans over the course of three days. NBC and ESPN live coverage in multiple hours. And then the Live Vegas Invitational. 350 clubs, teams would come and play in that, men and women. The largest Invitational Rugby Tournament in the Northern Hemisphere. Why can't that happen for the Nines Tournament? And it can. Ultimately, I think teams from England, Australia, France, New Zealand, Amateur clubs, semi-pro clubs, or want to come over and participate. If they're putting prize money up, like you yeah. said, mate, we'll jump out of our wheelchairs and put our hands up. Maybe we'll <laughs> climb in as well. But again, there's, a, there's so many ways that this can evolve and develop over time. So I think I, I hope people have the patience 
to, to see the benefit of year one yeah. and how that might look like in years three, four, and five. Five. Yeah, and I, I, I think you're right. Like the first thing that I see, you know, when we talk about this, the, um, you know, the showcase of, of players and the combine, you know, I think the women's aspect of it and, you know, having their impact and being able to go play in the NRLW is actually more of an opportunity than the men's side, right? You know, men, you know, we need some of, the top at, some of the top athletes in, you know, American football, basketball, whatever it may be. But a lot of those folks, a lot of those players are going to go play, you know, in the XFL or USFL, or if they don't make yeah. the NFL, which are very few. So yeah, it'll be a hard word, right? Choices, yeah. right? So, you know, they're going to be cho- choosing, you know, NFL Europe or whatever they, or NFL Australia, I guess they're trying to do now too. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. opportunities for those players, but it's that next tier down. It's those maybe D2 athletes in the U S that are still high level athletes that they may not play football, but they, you know, they have a good sense of what it could be in those, you know, uh, outside linebackers and those, you know, uh, th- those wide receivers and stuff that can run people over. And so it's, I think that's a, a good opportunity but i still think it's going to be the women who are going to have the the, the faster um track, uh, track to, to to impact is, is what yeah. we call it so it's exciting I I, i'm looking yeah. forward to it all right so double header we talk about everything else double header allegiant stadium nrl not only is it nrl match it's not a preseason match this is round well it's round zero but it's round one it's this this matters in the world right you know so what are your expectations Right, is what do you see, you know, from the level of play and the impact these might have on the non rugby league fan right now? So we're let's let's that's forget good, about like all good. of all of us amazing rugby league fans that we are and the lovers of the yep. sport. What about those yep. fans that we're trying to pull in, you know, maybe at the last minute, you know, Raiders fans who've never seen a rugby league game before. Hey, come out, use your season tickets and, and come to this game. Um, what what do you think that level of play and the impact that this will have on the average american sports fan knowing that it's going to be on like fs1 and things like that as well it's top of the list yeah it it certainly is because if you think about getting people interested in the sport and getting their attention and then building a business around it we understand that the nrl has motivations about how they want to expand their business and i think that's that's absolutely fair it's totally fair you know they want to expand the brand and they want to expand opportunities to draw more commercial revenue then, then the, uh, the, the focus of that has to be around the top end athletes and putting them on show. And then look, guys like us, who are always going to talk about rugby league, we'll sit in the phone booth and we'll talk about it. But it's that other fan as a business, you know, from the world that you're familiar with and, 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 and some of us in other, other businesses, you need to cross out of the, the, you know, the, the little subsection of the people that are always going to speak to each other. You need to find the other fans who might have an interest in this and, and who have they sort of looked at as the lower hanging fruit, a football fan. Oh, David, I think we've lost your microphone, by the way. Okay, you're good. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, so you're, you're talking about the, you're talking about the football fan. You're good. Yeah, but that's got to be the the, the 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 ultimate outcome would be that this game um, reaches more people than just the existing fan base. And if it does yeah. that in a small way in this first go round, and then more so in, in, in years to come, it's a win. You know, you've got more people talking about the game and then some in part will be investing in the game, whether it's to watch something, buy something. Uh, if you can't get to a game, get an app where the games are, are, are available, you know, at, at all hours of the night or all, all over the weekend. Um, so those things are critically important. And I think by showcasing the top end teams, the top talent, I think the NRL are very smart in doing that. And you've only got to look at existing models, the NFL international game. It's yeah. fantastic. And, and you've got, you, you got to believe that the people that are coming to watch those games in London or Germany, they're not all football fans. And, and American football fans, you know, they're coming from soccer, you know, they're coming from rugby, you know, they're coming from other sports. And at halftime, and I'll tell you this now, if, if we could give the NRL a tip, at halftime of our game, if they don't play um, Take Me Home Country Road or Sweet Caroline, <laughs> like they do at the NFL, because it wasn't, fa- did you see the NFL international games? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was great. You've got a stadium full of German fans singing those songs. So it's like, right. come on, I'm sure they can do it. We'll get the events department to work on that. But there think about the teams that are coming, mate. You know, some foundation clubs between South Sydney and the Roosters go all the way back to the beginning of the game. 
yeah. uh, you know, and, and the superstar players that are going to be playing on each of them, you know, outside of that with, with, with Manly. And and with um and who's the other ones that have come along? Tell me, remind me before. Uh, yeah, so, 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 right? yeah, so it's good. So we I, I, this kind of leads me to my next question. So this is this is a good segue. So be so the you know we've got the first two matches. Is, so first game is uh, Rabbitohs and Manly. Sensational. So who's going to win that? Who's going to win that game? I'll, I'll tell you what. My heart is with the Rabbitohs. My, my sisters would kill me if I didn't say that. And and a little known <laughs> fact maybe is that I grew up in. I was born in the South Sydney area, so okay. in, in, in a town called Maroubra, in, in a house that was across the park from where famous South Sydney players used to practice. So. Nice. And so, Russell Crowe, you know, we'll, we'll go with the Rabbitohs, but I apologise. My, my son's playing rugby union down in Manly. I played a season of rugby <laughs> there too, but we're going with the Rabbitohs in the first one. Okay, so Rabbitohs in the first one. The second one is uh, the Roosters and the Broncos. Who's winning that game? Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. The Broncos have just come off a fantastic, fantastic season, and disappointing end to the last 15, 20 minutes of a grand final up against the Roosters. So again, you know, between them and South, I think they have more competition premierships in, in, in the history of the league. So they brought a couple of, a, a couple of Titanic teams across to play, but I think, you know, my head says Broncos, but my heart's going to say Roosters. I'm, I'm a dragon through and through, but I grew up being a little bit of an Eastern side. There, there we go. Sydney both, Roosters both, fan. both Sydney teams taking the win. Uh, David, lastly, you know, before we wrapped up, you know, is there any special, announcement that you would like to mention regarding tickets and hotels in vegas yeah you know the NFL, <laughs> yeah exactly it, 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 it's 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 part of the plan i believe that you know we're trying to make it ex- inclusive and and being able to offer some exclusive opportunities to fans that, you know around the around the country to come and enjoy the game so there's some information i think you'll be sharing here and we'll be able to do it ourselves as well but there's some discounted ticket prices that that will be released today uh, for every fan you know, to, to come and enjoy the game. So they'll go out for the for the game. So as you mentioned, it's two for one, you know, and there's a 50% discount. So if you think about who else and how else would you get into Allegiant Stadium, an NFL football stadium for the price? Oh. I think right at the moment, the, the, the lowest price is $19, yeah. you know. So you've got to think about, you have an opportunity to come into and, and, and be, you know, experience rugby league in this wonderful stadium. That's part of the deal. And, and then there's some hotel opportunities. I know the NF, NRL are working with, Resorts World, um, uh, you know, people. A lot of people are booking rooms there. But if you can't happen to get a get a spot at the Resorts World, there's a package there with the Downtown Grand, and at the Westgate, you, you know, and yeah. you'll be sending out some QR codes and links for those for discounted room rates uh, for the teams and fans and everyone around the Footy Festival, friends and families uh, to come along. So, you yeah. know, I think the NRL are doing a wonderful job in, in trying to reach every 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 sports fan in America to come and enjoy this uh, incredible event. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think we'll release it here. You know, we talked about the downtown grand, you know, we're, again, we're not directly on this trip. We're a little bit off. So we're going to be able to get a little bit better prices and we'll release those codes, for, you know, 50, I think something like the Tuesday through Friday or Tuesday through Thursday, it's like 48 bucks a night is the deal we got, um, Can't which is, wait, man, come on in Vegas, yeah. 48 bucks a night. And it's actually, it, it, and it's not a, you know, you're not sleeping on the side of the uh, the back of a, of a hotel in the middle of, of the street. Like this is actually a pretty nice Great hotel locations. and it's yeah. a lot of yeah. good stuff going on. So yeah. um, so we'll release those and then we've got tickets um, are going to be 50, I think 50 percent off. So like you said, you know, you can get, you know, nine dollar tickets, nine, nine dollars and 50 cents to go yeah. you know, watch a, a rugby league, an NRL match. Look, oh and I gosh. think I think with respect to the, you know, the, the, the tickets for the games, you know, people can be a little little slow in the uptick, but there's been twenty some thousand tickets sold already. Think about that, mate. Yeah. For a rugby league game, rugby league games in America, yeah. and I think from from my understanding of it, there's you know fourteen or fifteen thousand of those are travellers from overseas, which is massive for the for for Vegas and the economy, and of that six or seven thousand that are purchased from the US, that in of itself is massive. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, so, you know, so I think I think people better get in and get these tickets because I think there's going to be quite a, a rush towards bring the your friends. Want to come. Yeah, bring totally. your friends, right? Bring yep. your friends. Come meet up with us. We're going to be planning a lot of stuff down there. We're there. You know, there's going to be events. There's got the nines events that we're going to be at. We're going to be at the USA Canada. Be, we're we're there. But maybe yeah. there'll be a tailgate party. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Everybody's going to try to figure it out. We're just hoping that we can get out there. Uh, you know, so. Everybody go hit up the NRL and let them know that we want to get out there to go and have a little fun. Um, but yeah, Nui, really appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us talking about rugby league and all the excitement. Um, we look forward to you know being out there with you in Vegas. Any 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 parting thoughts? 
no, I just appreciate having a chat about it and congratulations to you on, <laughs> on, your, on your new role with the USRL. I, I know that the game will be in good hands if, if you're helping to drive it forward. Yeah. But again, just, just an opportunity to be excited about just a, a fantastic uh, event coming to this country and, and everyone that's involved in rugby league specifically. If, if, if you have anything to do with any club and any team in this country, get yourself out there and drag your friends along and, and let's make this uh, just a sensational time. Yeah, we appreciate it. Dave Nui, legend and pioneer of growing rugby league and establishing rugby league in the United States. We greatly appreciate the time. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back, everybody. Really appreciate Nui for coming on. And man, that guy, you know, you talk about somebody who helped build something, you know, with the AMNRL, doing really great things. Yeah, I know there's, we'll talk another time about what happened between AMNRL and USARL and kind of the divide, you know, because it is part of the history. Everybody should know that. You know, people should understand like what happened. So we'll get some key points of view. Maybe maybe that's the next time we have him on, or maybe we get uh, Curtis from up with, uh, uh, Connecticut to come down and, and, and talk with us as well. We're excited about NRL. Like, like we just said, you know, right before, the, right before we had the break, we're going to have some coupon codes and we're going to have some QR codes that you can scan, download, do whatever you do, you know, for the, uh, the Grand Hotel in, in downtown Las Vegas. Um, it's going to be fun events. We're going to be events all week going on there. We'll have as much news as we possibly can um, through social media, whether it's Dylan or whoever, or maybe Lance sharing, you know, one thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning is we're very excited to not only have, you know, Dylan and Lance on the team, you know, working stuff, but you've got Avery McDougal, um, you know, he has joined the podcast and is doing out some, some really great stuff and he's going to be helping us out as well. And then of course, Sharon Lil. I mean, if you are in American rugby league or North American rugby league, and you don't know who Sharon Lil are, come on, really? Like, these ladies are fantastic. They are the super fans for the Toronto Wolf Pack, or were the super fans. I'd say they still are. Still, still super fans. Um, but they're putting out some great stuff too. They're going to help us out, and especially in Vegas, they're going to be doing some fun stuff with us as well. Um, let's see. Uh, if we, yeah, okay. Oh, that's right. We've got some uh, some gear, some USA. By the way, you got some USA Hawks gear. Now, limited supply of stuff that we just managed to scrounge up. That's on the Rugby League in America website. Uh, it's rugbyleagueinamerica.net. Um, you can go on there, check out everything. You can follow us on social media. We'll post everything on there as well. Go on there, help support us as we continue to try to grow this game, grow the sport, as Nui and I talked about. Um, we're witnessing, I think, a new chapter in the sport of Rugby League in the U.S. It is exciting for... Um, for people who have been around since, you know, since David Newey came over and started playing rugby league and getting teams together to, you know, even what happened with the, the shifts in the NARL and all the things that have happened, all the controversy and the fighting that's happened, we're seeing a shift. The, this new board that's been elected for the USARL, the new movement forward of everything, the growth of the teams around the country. If you aren't excited about what's happening in the U.S. and you know, the, the, the kind of cohesion that's starting to happen. Uh, man, I, I don't know. Just from administrators to players alike, right? All kinds of excitement. You can see it. I'm excited. I'm just getting like all torn up on words now. Like I'm, I'm ready to get going. Like, 2024 is here. It's going. Like we're going to have fun. Follow us on social media. Follow Rugby League in America on Twitter, Instagram. We're on TikTok too. Don't ask why. Um, Help us to continue to grow this wonderful game that we call Rugby League. Until next time, keep the passion alive for Rugby League. My name is Dustin Zare, and this has been Rugby League in America. <laughs>